Hi, I'm Derek Fahey, a registered patent attorney and trademark attorney with the Plus IP firm. And this video is gonna be on the process for getting a trademark registered in the United States. So first off, I may use the term USPTO. That basically is an acronym for the United States Patent and Trademark Office. I tend to use USPTO and United States Patent and Trademark Office interchangeably. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. So let's get started. First off, before you file an application, I highly recommend that you do a trademark clearance search. And I'll explain why in the, uh, later on, but um, the, I highly recommend it because the last thing you wanna do is file an application to register the brand if you're not gonna be able to get it registered. So that's something to think about. Okay. Now if you decided that you wanna file an application, the next question is what application do you wanna file? There's two applications you could potentially file. The first one is called an intend to use application, intend to use application. The second application is a use based application. The intent to use application, you don't actually have to be using the mark. You don't have to be actually selling goods or services associated with the mark just yet, but you do need to have a bona fide intent to use the mark in the future. Now, why is that important? Because if you're not using the mark, you can at least reserve the right to use the mark so that how other people can't come in and begin using the mark and block you from registering your trademark. Very important. The second type of application is a use-based application. A use-based application essentially means that you're actually using the mark, you're selling goods and services associated with the mark. The legal term is use in commerce. Are you using it in commerce? Well, what does that mean? Generally speaking, for goods, um, you would actually wanna transport the goods all across state lines with the actual trademark on the product. So for example, if you're selling t-shirts, you may wanna have a tag with the, with the actual uh, trademark on the back of the shirt and transfer, transferring it across state lines. That would actually consider use in commerce. For services, if you're providing a blog post or doing a blog, blog posts that are posted on the internet where other people can access it in different states, that actually uh, constitutes use. So when you're deciding whether you wanna file a use-based application or intent use application, you should talk to your attorney because there are certainly there are certain requirements that you want, want to know about before you do that. Now that you've decided what type of application you wanna file, now you have to file the application. After you file it, you move into the pre-examination phase. The pre-examination phase is basically a waiting period before the application is examined by the government. Typically, it's about 3.5 to 7.5 months but it can be even longer depending on how backed up the system is. People always ask me if you can actually expedite the application. You can, but in only certain instances. Uh, for example, if you're involved in litigation, you can actually expedite the application. So that's something to consider as well. Moving on to the examination phase. Eventually, the examining attorney will get the application and he will examine it to determine whether the application and the mark and the services um, associated with the application meet the legal requirements to be registered with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The examiner, first thing he will do is just search. The examiner attorney will do a search to see what other already registered marks or already filed trademark applications have been filed that are confusingly similar to your uh, trademark. So if you file an application um, and for pink elephant for clothing and there's another pink elephants for clothing that's already registered, the trademark attorney would actually reject your application because of the already filed or already registered trademark application or registration for pink elephants. So again, going back to doing a search, it's always important to do a search because your mark could get rejected because of another mark. So you don't wanna do that. The examiner attorney will also examine your application to see if it meets other requirements. Too many to discuss here, but essentially there are several requirements that you have to meet and the examining attorney could reject it based upon those requirements. And it could be a simple response and you can respond to the, to the rejection, which by the way is known as an office action. And after you respond to the office, that office action, if the examining attorney finds that your response is overcomes the rejection, you'll move it on to the next stage. If the examiner attorney does not find that your response is overcome the rejection, he'll issue another rejection known as a final rejection. When you get a final rejection, it's actually not final because you can actually file another response. If you can file another response, which is known as a request for reconsideration, or you can actually appeal the examiner's decision if you don't agree with his decision. So if you were to appeal the decision, you file the appeal with the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board. 
That's a T-tab. Assuming that you overcome all the rejections and the examining attorney approves the mark, you actually will move it to the publication stage. The publication stage is when your trademark application is published, which is known as the opposition period. During the opposition period, your mark is published on a registrar, known as a federal registrar, for the world to see. After your mark is published on the federal registrar, anybody can object to the registration of your mark within a 30 day window, which is known as the opposition period. If someone were to object to the registration of your mark, they would file a opposition proceeding with the TTAB or the TTAB or the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board opposing your registration. If that happens, you can actually uh, respond and answer and basically involved in litigation. There are ways to deal with that and if effectively and efficiently, uh, you should talk to your attorney about that. Assuming that nobody opposes your mark during the opposition period, Next, the mark will actually move to registration if it's a use-based application, if you're actually using the mark. If it's an intent-to-use application, that means you have actually not begun using it, the USPTO will issue what's known as a notice of allowance. A notice of allowance basically says your mark's been approved and now you have to show that you begin using it. You can actually delay proving that you're using the mark for up to three years by filing extensions of time for up to up to three years after the notice of allowance. So after the notice of allowance, you get six months to file or prove that you're using the mark. And then you can actually file up to five extensions of time. So you get up to three years to show that you're using the mark. You should ask your attorney about that because there's some specific requirements of how to do that. Okay, assuming you're able to show that you're using the mark, if it's an intent to use application, the USPTO will then move the application to registration and have the mark registered similar to the, U, the use based application. And that's because once you prove that you're using the mark in commerce, the USPTO essentially converts the application to a use based application and allows it to register. Now that you have your registered mark, you may have to pay maintenance fees after the fifth and sixth year. But that's for a different topic about maintenance fees and trademarks. If you have any questions, definitely ask your attorney. Um, also, if you like the video, please leave comments. I really appreciate you watching and hopefully you found it helpful.